Hi everyone, I'm Jay Hostler, uh, and I'm really sorry I can't be with you there today. Uh, Susan Squire asked me to put together a little video talking about my interest in One Health and how it inspired the comic that I hope has been made available to you. So my name is Jay Hostler. I'm the chair of the biology department at Junietta College. Um, my training is as a neuroethologist, so I teach courses to uh, health profession students as well as kids interested in organismal biology, so neurobiology and animal behavior along with others. My interest uh, uh, professionally is in creating science comics that can either be used for entertainment <clears throat> or education or both. So um, what is it that drew me to One Health? <clears throat> One Health is interesting to me because um, my training as a biologist uh, makes it pretty clear that you cannot remove components from an ecosystem or any kind of system without having fundamental and profound changes. Um, this is true of human systems as well. So I am a type 2 diabetic. I have um, insulin resistance, which means I've altered a single homeostatic mechanism in my body and obviously the impacts for triglyceride processing and for blood pressure have led to me taking multiple other medications to deal with that. Likewise, um, <clears throat> the, the microbiome or keystone species in the environment and ecosystems means it's clear that you cannot divorce one organism from the rest. And that goes for humans as well. So let's uh, consider the story. Uh, the story focuses on Rita Colwell. Uh, who uh, is a microbiologist, a microbial ecologist essentially, who found a pretty critical link between the health of our planet and hum our pu human public health in, in terms of cholera. So the comic starts with a, a framing device uh, that's clearly the Superman story. I like this one because it involves um, a clear catastrophic event uh, in which a scientist is ignored. And so <laughs> So I always thought as a kid it was absurd, but as we look at climate denialist, evolution denialist, and et cetera, et cetera, in our country today, it's clear that it is not. Um, it focuses on Rita Colwell, who uh, is a brilliant woman scientist, so it elevates um, a woman in science and uh, who has an influence on medicine. And it outlines uh, in at least one sequence uh, sort of the resistance that she faced. Now, she was proposing ideas that were new and skepticism is a part of science and, um, and being you know, in the field of medicine. But sometimes we, uh, we mask denial and we call it skepticism because ideas threaten what we've learned and what we know. And I think that's what she faced. I also, if you read her biography, I think that she makes a pretty strong case for the fact that uh, her ideas would have been received quite differently had she been um, a man. And so uh, there's a middle sequence there in which we map out her series of experiments, her series of discoveries, and how two men, scientists med and, and physicians, are reacting to that and how she sort of made them crazy. The other thing about comics that I think that are uh, really important is the fact, the way in which they compress time and they can use humor. And so using humor here was a big part of what I wanted to do. Uh, the next thing is that comics can allow us to use images that are familiar to drive home points without actually saying things. So uh, on, the, on the page in which Rita appears as a Vitruvian woman, the underscoring element here is that this is a person who's made a substantial and interesting contribution. We connect to da Vinci, who was, you know, a really broadly trained individual. Colwell was as well. She was originally going to be an English major. Um, she's a beautiful writer, and she's done medical and environmental bi microbiological research. It also, as it gets arrayed around there, you can see the connections between cholera, the, um, the copepods that they live on and the phytoplankton that are affected by, um, by climate change. Comics also allow us, because it's a visual medium, to insert data. So in a couple of cases, we've got data figures that are uh, integral parts that Rita is either climbing on or sitting on. And it allows us to visualize things that might otherwise be difficult to visualize. And, and most importantly, I think, in terms of comics, you can have characters that you can see and that readers can potentially identify with. And I think having humor and characters in some sort of narrative, in this case, a, a woman trying to get ideas out, meeting resistance, but ultimately being correct, these are critical 
elements to helping human brains process and retain the information. It's been shown in a number of studies that our brains are wired for narrative. And if what you want to do is influence the way in which people think about health, think about voting for people who are interested and have our health needs in need, then what you need to do is you need to tell them stories, visual narrative stories that they can remember, that they are moved by emotionally, and that it can then drive them to make the important decisions that can ultimately keep us all well. Have a great time. Thank you very much for the time. I hope to see some of you soon. Bye-bye.